Let's talk about the additional equipment that you'll need in order to uh, practice with dry fire in your own environment. Number one, you're going to need some sort of computer. Uh, this can be a laptop computer, it can be a desktop, it can be uh, even actually a fairly old computer. The only requirement is that it's PC based, so it has to be, has to, it has Windows as its platform. We can't accommodate, cannot accommodate anything with a Mac. So with that one limitation, we, uh, the operating software can go as far back as Windows XP, which uh, you'll recognize as being pretty antiquated, all the way up through Windows 8. The reason for that is all the real uh, difficult math and calculations and so forth that are going on are actually taking place inside the simulator itself. And so the computer is really to communicate with the simulator. It's be able to type data in, uh, select from drop-down menus, look at a monitor and that type of thing. So just keep in mind, you don't need a fancy computer in order to run the dry fire. Uh, secondly, you're probably gonna want uh, a printer to attach to this. It's not a requirement, but one of the real benefits of dry fire is having all that in really nice information that's available. If you have a printer, you can uh, print out the data. You have uh, three options. You can save the data, you can save and print, or you can print it. So having a printer is a nice uh, addition to your, to your setup. Uh, another thing that, again, is not necessary, but in certain environments becomes pretty handy, and that is a monitor. So in our setup over here, uh, you can see I've got a desk, or excuse me, a laptop on a stand over here, that's what's actually controlling my simulator. In my setup, my simulator is right here. It's mounted upside down uh, on the ceiling, and I have a monitor over here. Now, again, a monitor is not necessary. It's just an, an enlargement of what is on your computer monitor. So if you're practicing in your own home by yourself, you probably don't need a monitor. If you're going to be uh, in a team environment where you've got you know, lots of athletes shooting, uh, sometime, and, and the computer that you're running it on is a laptop, that might be a little challenging to actually get the visual feedback uh, to people in a, you know, an efficient way. Sometimes uh, monitors have that thing where you get off to the side, you can't really see, uh, it, it obscures the, the image. And so sometimes having a monitor as part of the system is nice because it's larger, easier to read the data, brighter and so forth. So, so a monitor, again, not necessary, can be advantageous uh, in, in some situations. Uh, additionally, when it comes to mounting the tripod, excuse me, <laughs> mounting the simulator, a lot of folks like to use a camera tripod. Uh, it's inexpensive, you know, can acquire it anywhere. And in that situation, the simulator would be mounted about here, uh, facing the wall on a, on a tripod. Um, other folks use, they, they make their own stands. Uh, sometimes you can see people that make uh, stands that are maybe a foot square uh, that are, are very have a very small profile in the room and that's kind of handy too because it's uh, you don't have to worry about the legs from the tripod getting bumped or anything like that it's a little smaller profile so we've seen some really elaborate super fancy setups uh, that dry fire uh, users have used uh, some of these guys who are uh, carpenters cabinet makers, uh, there's some stuff that I envy quite a bit when I see that things that people send in. So it's, it's uh, kind of however you want to use it. Um, in this setup, as I've described, uh, mine is mounted upside down on the ceiling. For those of you that have an environment that allows you to do that, uh, that's a pretty handy way to go. The only thing that you need to take into account is you've got to get your USB cable over and down to your computer. And there are uh, USB cables out there with extenders that allow you to do that. So uh, the system comes with a six foot USB cable, that won't be enough to get over and down to your computer. So that's something that you might wanna keep in mind. But once it is set up, it's, it's pretty handy because you never have to do anything to it. It's always there, it's out of the way, it's not gonna get bumped or anything like that. So for those of you who have a little bit more of a permanent setup, that's kinda of handy too. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the room requirements the setup, the different uh, layouts for different sports and so forth. The, on average, what we say, the, the smallest room that you really want to consider as being able to use a dry fire system in is a room about eight feet by eight feet. It can be done, and in this, in this we're talking about trap, uh, we're talking about um, sporting clays, some bunker, could be done in a room that area. It depends on a couple things that I'll talk about in a, in a second. So eight by eight is kind of the minimum uh, size room that you can get away with. As far as height of the ceiling, 
That also um, varies a little bit about what sport you're shooting and how quick a shooter you are. Uh, I will tell you that we do have uh, dry fire customers, particularly in the northeast part of the United States in older homes uh, you know, that are built uh, before the turn of the last century that have basements that uh, you know, have pretty low ceilings. And we've got some guys out there, and I say guys, I mean men and women, who are using their dry fire in, in basements that are probably uh, six feet eight high. So again, there's a few modifications you might have to make if you're in a room that, lo that low of ceiling, but you can do it. Uh, ideally, you know, if you're somewhere around a seven foot ceiling and above, that's plenty of room for you in order to do it. Now let's talk about some of the other optimal sizes. Um, a, a size that is really ideal for an individual user, particularly a trap shooter, is a room that's 10 by 10. Uh, the canvas that, uh, that comes with the dry fire system, this is one that you see behind here, uh, they come in three different sizes. They come in 10 foot, 14 foot, and 18 foot. Depending on the uh, sports that you're shooting and also uh, the, the environment and whether you're an individual or a team, we recommend different size canvases. If you're limited by size, you'll get a 10 foot canvas. And of course that can be modified, it can be cut down. If your room is narrower than that, it's not a problem. You can, you can make your canvas smaller in order to fit your wall. Uh, so 10 foot is kind of ideal for an individual user. Uh, for a team, we recommend a 14 foot canvas. And that's for a, usually with a, a, a team that shoots trap, uh, shoots on a 14 foot canvas. The reason for that is that when you add more people to the line, in order to make these stations farther apart so that we have more elbow room and more comfort, we actually stand farther away from the wall. The farther away from the shooting wall we are, the more the, the stations spread out, the more elbow room that we have. So whereas a 10 foot room is fine for an individual, maybe up to two shooters because you can put a space between each shooter, you've got elbow room. A team of five, that's not enough room, you're gonna to be too close together. So we recommend that you step back to the 12 foot from the wall when you shoot in a team or a squad, and that requires a 14 foot wide wall. So um, a 14 foot wide will handle a, a trap team perfectly. The only additional upgrade in size that you may want to consider is an 18 foot canvas, and that's what I have on the wall back here. An 18 foot canvas is what's uh, necessary for skeet shooters. Skeet being a very lateral game, a much more, much more lateral movement, requires a bigger wall in order to accommodate that. So if you have the room and, it, and, and are a skeet shooter, an 18 foot canvas is really the optimal situation. Now I will say that there are, uh, there are some modifications to these rules. If you're concerned about your, the room that you have not being enough or whatever, go ahead and call us, talk to us. We can tell you specifically knowing what your, your situation is, what we can and cannot do. We have something in skeet we call compressed wall where we do have skeet shooters that, that want to use it for, for skeet, but they don't have an 18 foot wide wall in order to accommodate it. So we have created something we call compressed wall where we can shoot skeet on a down to a 12 foot wide wall. And there's a few things that we have to do in order in the software and your layout to accommodate that, but you will still shoot accurate targets. There's just a few caveats about that that I won't go into in this, but uh, contact us if you have interest in that and, and if you're a skeet shooter and don't have a big enough room. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about how far you stand from the wall. Uh, dry fire is very flexible in the distance that you stand from the wall. Um, you can be as close as 8 feet, 7 feet from the wall. You can be all the way back to 12 feet and if you have certain environments that allow for it, you can be farther back. No more than uh, 14 or 15 feet from the wall is the maximum distance that you can stand from the wall for the dry fire to work. All you have to do is figure out what room, what works best in your room. You plug that data into, this, into the software, you tell dry fire how far that you're standing from the wall, and in fact, the system will tell you where to put the rest of the stations. So for instance, in this room, uh, I've got two different uh, labels on the floor here. Red is trap and blue is skeet. So in this trap layout, station three is 10 feet from the wall. If you plug into the system with dry fire to say that station three, which is on the center point, is 10 feet from the wall, it'll tell you exactly where to put stations one, two, four, and five. So you don't have to try to calculate that out yourself. It'll, it'll tell you where to put 
the label. And the system comes with these floor stickers so that you can set those and, and know exactly where you're supposed to, stay, to stand. The thing about dry fire is that where you stand is very important. It's a very important part of getting the, the uh, math right uh, so that the experience is, is right. So the, the thing you always want to think about when you're shooting is that where you stand is such that whatever your stance is, whether you're more of an upright shooter or if you're perhaps a skeet shooter and you have more lean to, we don't care about that. All we care is that when you're ready to call pull, your eye should be directly over the center of that floor label. So if you're, uh, if you're standing with your foot on the label and you're way forward like this, that's not the way you want to do it. You want, you want to do it such that when you're ready to call pull with your gun mount, you look down and your eye is directly above the floor label. So that, that's how we uh, orient, orient you in the room in order to have an accurate experience. Okay, so trap, uh, you can be as close as 8 feet all the way back to 12 feet and further if necessary in your environment. Uh, so that's the range. Skeet is different. Skeet is shot at seven feet from the wall. And again, the reason for that is because the very lateral movement that you have, if we were to stand 10 feet from the wall with skeet, our wall would have, in order to accommodate it, would have to be 25 feet. And there aren't many people that have rooms that, with 25 foot walls. So, so we stand, uh, and, and it's all in the soft words and the instructions, how far exactly, but it's right at around seven feet from the wall. Now with skeet, it's a little bit different as far as the layout. If you can see here, I've got stations two through six here on the floor, and that's because we shoot stations one, seven, and eight from station four. And the reason for that, for skeet shooters, you can understand that the, that the trajectory and the geometry on here would be impossible for us to accommodate standing way over there for station one and, and so forth. So what we do is we, we throw targets one, seven, and eight from station four. And so if you were to go uh, out at the skeet range and stand on station one, close your eyes and, and imagine where that target's coming from, if you stand on station four here and open your eyes, that's exactly where the target will come from here too. So, so when we shoot skeet with dry fire, we start here, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the layout is, is, is looks something like this in, in your setup. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind is that, uh, again, you can be very flexible. Uh, you don't have to think in terms of, I've got to find a room that fits what dry fire is gonna tell me to do. It's very flexible. Where you put the simulator is flexible, where you put the stations are flexible. Some people have it where they will shoot uh, in, a, in a game room. Uh, let's just say they put the simulator on the, on the um, uh, pool table or ping pong table and they shoot over the top of it. Uh, it's, it's very flexible. A couple things also to think about as far as your, your canvas, and we'll talk here a little bit about a canvas, is that uh, these canvases can be mounted in many different ways. Uh, they come rolled up in a tube uh, that's about uh, four inches in diameter, three and a half inches in diameter, 54 inches tall. So it's in a tube and it comes on a, a spool. It's a very heavy duty vinyl material. You can mount it in many different ways. We've seen just about everything imaginable. Uh, some people use grommets and they hang it that way. Uh, a lot of people will uh, mount it to a frame. This particular uh, 18 footer here is mounted on a, a very thin uh, one by three frame and over the top of that is a lightweight Luan or under, underlayment material about an eighth inch thick. It's hinged and so I can actually take that off, fold it up and it slides in the back of my Suburban and I can take it places with me, just fold it up. I get to where I'm going, I've got a couple handles, I carry it out, unfold it, hang it on the wall and then you know put up my trap and skeet houses. So uh, it can be very portable if you want to. Um, those of you that can have a permanent application you don't have to worry about babying the, the canvas. The only thing you cannot do is don't fold it because it'll get creases. But if you roll it to move it or anything, you're good to go. Some people will staple, just staple it to the wall. Uh, some people wallpaper it to the wall because it is very heavy duty material. Um, some folks just build like a lightweight frame with nothing over the top of it, just almost like a picture frame. Uh, and I've even uh, seen people who have used magnets. 
So they'll have like a, a lightweight uh, frame and then they'll just put uh, magnets that'll hold it up in place. That's for folks that can't leave it up. Maybe it's at the gun club or someplace that they can't leave it up permanently. So they, they leave a frame that's attached to the wall that doesn't look bad at all. And then they just roll out their canvas, put the magnets up. And when they're done, they take it, take it away. So the purpose of the canvas, there's, there's many purposes. Number one, it provides a smooth, flat, uh, flat as far as dull and a smooth, flat as far as surface material for the uh, laser to track smoothly across. If you have texture on the wall or uh, paneling with grooves or cinder block with bumps uh, or with the, with the uh, joints, your targets will look jittery and it'll be a very poor experience. So the canvas provides a nice, smooth, perfect uh, surface for the targets to fly smoothly over. Another couple things that the, the canvas provides is some reference points. If you look at this and if you notice, we've got clouds in the sky. And when you're shooting different things, particularly when you're trying to learn something yourself or when you're trying to teach somebody something, you can use the variation in the color and the clouds in the sky, the blue sky, in order to know maybe where you're going to anticipate seeing the, the target, where you're going to hold your gun, those type of things. It gives you a point of reference in the sky and gives you kind of a feel of depth, like you're, you're actually outdoors. Another really handy thing that the, <laughs> that the uh, canvas does is it allows you to use walls that might not otherwise be um, serviceable for your system. For instance, in this room, uh, this uh, canvas uh, and frame is covering a door. And right above the, the uh, TV monitor right there is a, is a door that goes to the outside. Well, this is the largest wall in this building and it has a door in the middle of it. So if I didn't have my canvas, I don't have an 18 foot wide wall in order to shoot my skeet. So the fact that you can hang this over things that are already on the wall that you don't want to move, you know, plug plates or, you know, paneling or, or you know, uh, any kind of uh, things on the wall that are permanent that you really can't move, you just hang your canvas in front of it. And another thing that, that quite a few people are doing, and it's pretty, pretty creative and I think it's a great idea, is they use a canvas like this on a frame in order to, in order to allow them to practice in their garage because most garages in the United States are somewhere around 20 feet by 20 feet. Uh, and that obviously is larger than even our biggest canvas, the ski canvas. So what people have done is they've made a frame very similar to this and, with, and put uh, eye bolts on the top of it and then use just some very simple chain, large chain link uh, on top of that. And then that allows them to hang that from the ceiling and so when they're, when they're shooting, obviously it's hanging down there. They set up their simulator, or some of them even have it mounted in the garage. They've got their, their canvas hanging here. And then when they're not shooting, they just lift it up onto the ceiling, and they've got a couple little, you know, little things that they twist to, to hold it permanently in place. And so then it, when they're done, most people don't even know it's there. It's mounted a couple inches from the ceiling in their garage, out of the way. It's not going to get beat up by anything and they can pull their cars in or do whatever they need to do. And then when, the, when they're ready to shoot, back the truck out of the garage, lower it down, maybe in front of your tools or whatever's hanging on the wall and you've got a perfect shooting spot. So that's, uh, that's a way that you can actually use the canvas to reclaim a wall or a, an area uh, that you might not otherwise be able to use. Another item that's part of the dry fire system is what we call our ATA trap house. This, this three dimensional trap house uh, mounts to and actually it mounts to your canvas in a way I'll show you here in just a second. What it allows you to do is to get a point of reference. So not only do we have the, the canvas that gives you a sense of depth and looking out on a trap field with the addition of the 3D trap house, it helps us when we're trying to uh, get ready to take a shot. So as you rotate across from your stations, the perspective will change uh, and what this trap house looks like, just like it does outdoors. So if you have a certain uh, reference point off of the trap house of where you hold your gun when you're getting ready to shoot, this will aid in that. So it'll look the same to you as it does outdoors. The way this mounts is that we have uh, a piece of metal that uh, it, this actually comes with the system and this mounts behind your, your canvas. Uh, most people just tape this to whatever surface is behind your canvas. So this is against the wall, the canvas is over it. it this provides uh, a way for us to uh, attach 
And what we've got is we've got magnets that are on the back of the trap house. So the, the magnets hold the trap house to the piece of metal. The beauty of this is that we can slide this up and down um, and it, it'll stay wherever we stop moving it. So like I said, this is, a, this is to scale from the 16 yard line. If you're uh, uh, wanting to shoot from farther back, we've got two different uh, size houses that are in addition. We've got a, a mid-range house for those that are in the you know, mid-range and their handicap. And then for those that are farther back, we've got this trap house. And so this is more to scale uh, for those that are back, say from about the 24 to the 27 yard line. So what that allows us to do is, again, it, the, the feeling will be more realistic uh, as we shoot. And the reason that we change the scale of the trap houses is that with the dry fire system, when we shoot handicap targets on the simulator, you don't actually back up in the room. Um, we do that for a couple reasons. Most people don't have a room where they can walk 11 yards back. And the other thing is that the, we would have to have lasers that were much more powerful in order to shoot greater distances to that wall and we don't want to use those powerful of lasers. So in order to simulate the same as if you were backing up, we do it with software. And what we do is we change the angle and the launch point of those targets. So it looks to you as though you had backed up, even though you are in the same stations one through five always, whether you threw shooting 16 yard targets all the way back to 27 yard targets. So the way that we make that look more realistic is of course we change the size of the trap house to make it look like you've gone farther back. The other thing that dry fire does uh, within the software is as well as making the angle shallower, just like as you back up on yardage, they appear shallower to you. The launch point is also higher on the horizon. So if you think about it, if you were to go up to the corner of your trap house outdoors at your local club and point at the corner of the house, as you walk back, that house rises in, in relation to the horizon, just like when you go from the 16 yard line to the 27 yard line, things rise in your perspective. Dry fire does the same thing, and so what it allows us to do is to raise our launch point when we let go, then it's accurate. So this is part of the system. This comes with your dry fire system. So you get a piece of, you get the metal uh, that goes behind this. You get the trap house with the magnets. The standard is to get a 16 yard trap house because not all people shoot caps or handicap targets. If you, if you are a handicap target shooter, then of course you have the option of getting the other size trap houses. But again, this gives you a very realistic uh, sense of, of uh, outdoor practice. And as you rotate, to be able to see the, the angles of this house changes, something that feels very natural to you.